This is USBI News, your Virgin Islands connection. Hi everyone, thanks for joining us for USBI News. I'm Haley Potter in for Emily Matson. This weekend is a day of celebration for basketball superstar Aliyah Boston to recognize all of her success. The Office of the Governor and Sports, Park and Recreation are hosting an Aliyah Boston Day hometown celebration this coming weekend. On Saturday, June 4th, they'll unveil a sign at the King Airport for the NCAA Women's Basketball star who of course hails from here in St. Thomas. They'll also have a parade down Veterans Drive and a ceremony at the Waterfront Promenade. As the National Player of the Year, Boston helped lead the South Carolina Gamecocks to a national championship this year. And while in the territory, she will be hosting some basketball camps this summer for young female players in both districts. Aliyah Boston Celebration Day on Saturday starts with the sign unveiling at 10 in the morning. It is day two of festivities to celebrate Queen Elizabeth's 70 years on the British throne and the 96-year-old monarch will be missing some of the biggest events. Ian Lee takes us to London. Queen Elizabeth beamed from the balcony at Buckingham Palace as tens of thousands cheered her on. Day one of the Platinum Jubilee was packed full of festivities from morning until night when palace officials announced the 96-year-old monarch needed to slow down. They said the Queen experienced some discomfort on Thursday and with great reluctance will skip the service of Thanksgiving at St. Paul's Cathedral today. She's getting older now, but she looks vibrant as ever. Her outfit looks amazing. The future King, Prince Charles, will stand in for the Queen at the church service. Also attending, Prince Harry and Meghan, who flew in from California for the historic occasion. Jubilee celebrations will stretch throughout the weekend here in the UK. On Saturday, a concert featuring Elton John, Diana Ross and Alicia Keys will rock crowds around Buckingham Palace. Street parties are already underway. We love our queen. We love our queen. <laughs> As you can see. The star of the show was nearly upstaged by her great-grandson Prince Louis during Thursday's spectacular flyby. As royal jets thundered overhead, it was a bit too loud for the four-year-old who covered his ears to block out the noise. But the queen seemed to revel in the moment, marking her 70 years on the British throne. Queen Elizabeth, who became queen at age 25 and is Britain's longest reigning monarch. Switching gears now to the latest COVID-19 numbers in the territory, which were announced earlier this week. Health officials are currently tracking 664 active cases territory-wide, with the most significant amount on St. Croix right now, recording a total of 487 active cases, 147 on St. Thomas, and 30 on St. John. With a persistent shortage of baby formula impacting the nation, President Biden hosted a roundtable with baby formula manufacturers. President Biden spoke with baby formula manufacturers, including top executives from Gerber and Perigo Company, as the administration tries to increase production and imports of baby formula during the shortage. The administration announced it will provide more than $2 billion to try to strengthen the nation's food supply system. Also, a third Operation Fly Formula mission will bring more baby formula to the United States. United Airlines has agreed to transport the formula free of charge, making this the first Operation Formula flight to be donated by an airline carrier. And President Biden addressed a nation scarred by gun violence on Thursday night, outlining the steps he believes Congress needs to take to address mass shootings in America. There are too many other schools, too many other everyday places that have become killing fields, battlefields here in America. As Americans struggle to grasp a lethal wave of mass shootings that are traumatizing communities and tearing lives apart. After Columbine after Sandy Hook, after Charleston, after Orlando, after Las Vegas, after Parkland, nothing has been done. President Biden is calling out Congress to come together and work on bipartisan gun reform laws. This is not about taking away anyone's guns. It's about vil not about vilifying gun, o gun owners. In fact, we believe we should be treating responsible gun owners as an example of how every gun owner should behave. The president laying out actions he believes need to be taken. And if we can't ban assault weapons, then we should raise the age to purchase them from 18 to 21. Strengthen background checks. Enact safe storage law and red flag laws. Repeal the immunity that protects gun manufacturers from liability. 
address the mental health crisis. Senate GOP leader Mitch McConnell says he's, quote, hopeful and optimistic that lawmakers can compromise on legislation to address mass shootings to have ready to unveil when the Senate returns to session next week. Mental illness and school safety are what we need to target. And the nation has been rocked by another mass shooting, this time at a medical building in Oklahoma, which houses an outpatient surgery center and breast health center. New information comes out about the gunman responsible for the death of four people at the hospital. A motive behind the shooting is also being revealed. The gunman involved in the Tulsa hospital shooting targeted a doctor who had treated him. He bought the AR-15 style rifle just three hours before using it in the shooting, according to officials. The shooter blamed Dr. Preston Phillips, who was killed in the attack for his pain. The Tulsa police chief said that the shooter was a patient of Phillips, and on the day of the attack, the shooter had a letter with him which was evident of his, quote, intent to kill Dr. Phillips and anyone who got in his way. That's according to the police chief, too. The shooter died from an apparent self-inflicted gunshot wound. More than half a million students who attended a for-profit college system will have their debt completely erased. The move is part of a broader effort by the Biden administration to relieve more Americans of crushing student loans. This building once housed Everest College in West Los Angeles, a remnant of one of the nation's most notorious cases of alleged fraud in higher education. The campus was part of the chain of Corinthian for-profit colleges that collapsed in 2015, leaving students under mountains of debt. I spent a lot of money to come here, and now the money basically I feel has been thrown in the trash. I feel like they walked into my house and they went into my wallet and then took five grand from me. At that time, Vice President Kamala Harris was California's attorney general and had sued the company for misleading practices. Thursday, she announced 560,000 former students will have their federal loans canceled. It means that if you attended Corinthian at any point in its existence, you will receive this relief automatically. You do not need to apply for it. The government's action erases nearly $6 billion in debt for students who took on more and more loans in the hopes of graduating into high-paying jobs. Vice President Harris says instead, many got nothing but heartache. Our investigation revealed that some of the degrees from Corinthian were so worthless that they didn't help a single student get a job. The move comes as the Biden administration considers broader action to relieve Americans of more than $1.7 trillion in student loans. The bottom line is we're fixing a broken system. Administration officials say they're looking carefully at the issue, but no decision has been made yet on how to proceed. Dina Demetrius, CBS News, Los Angeles.